Welcome to worship at Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in McMurray, Pennsylvania. As a congregation, we are worshiping in person at 5.30 on Saturday evenings and at 9 and 11 on Sundays. Our preacher today is Bishop Kurt Cussero, the Bishop of the Southwestern Pennsylvania Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our brothers and sisters. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to see your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you earn the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a fool, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength, even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So just to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, 
You do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day, we are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done. Good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So, take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. What day is it today? That's the COVID question, right? What day is it today? For eight months, we've been largely isolated from other people in order to protect us and to protect others from the virus. But eight months of the same thing 
in the same place with the same people or no people day after day after day after day after day after day blurs all frames of reference and we find ourselves asking, what day is it today? Here are four answers. Today is the day after Synod Assembly. This recorded liturgy is the best we can do this year to be together as a synod in a time when we can't be together in person. And it's the next to last Sunday in the church year, just before tipping into Advent. Our liturgical focus is directed to the end times, to the coming day of the Lord. And today is a dozen days after Election Day in our country. I am recording this sermon the end of October, so I do not know the outcome of the election yet. But I doubt that any outcome will quickly remove the deep polarization of our country that has manifest in fear and anger and distrust and civil unrest. And in a more positive light, today our synod celebrates with Pastor Beth Platts, the first woman ordained in a Lutheran church in North America, a daughter of our synod, whose ordination day was November 22, 50 years ago. Oh, and we are still fully in that raging global pandemic. So there's that. I hardly need to remind you of that. St. Paul said pretty much the same thing to the church in Thessalonica when he wrote, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. And then he goes on to write to them all about it. <laughs> Typical man. Okay, I know I can't say that, even if it is true. But I can say that for nearly all the church's history, men have been the ones speaking and writing about pretty much everything. But now, over the last 50 years, our local Lutheran expression of the church increasingly has been blessed and refreshed to hear the voices of women serving in the office of pastor. St. Paul urges the Thessalonians in their challenging days to encourage one another and build up each other. The holy work of encouragement is more likely to build up the whole church when it includes the voices of the whole church. For 50 years now, our church has included the voices of women preaching and teaching and celebrating the sacraments and hearing confession and absolving and providing pastoral care and doing theology and writing biblical commentary and telling us about Jesus. How is our synod reflecting that reality? By my count, of the 100 pastors under call on our synod's roster, 42 are women. So that's what day it is today. It's a day of synod celebration, along with a day of liturgical anticipation and a day of civil tumult, and yet one more day, isolated from others because of a highly contagious virus. What word of the Lord speaks to us on a day such as this? We believe and confess that in every situation, we hear God's word as one word, both as the law that convicts us and as the gospel that frees us. Today, I hear the word of the Lord in this clear declaration from 1 Thessalonians 5. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. You are children of the day. Children of the day, St. Paul writes. That's a declaration, a claim. It's not an invitation or a demand. It's just stated as a self-evident fact. Almost as though saying it creates the very thing it names, like when the word of God brought forth the first works of creation just by naming them. Light, water, land, living things people. You are, the word of the Lord declares to us through St. Paul's letter, you are children of the day. 
And therefore, you don't need to be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night, St. Paul says, because you are not in the darkness, but you are children of the light and of the day, which means that even in tumultuous times, you're up and dressed and paying attention as people are during the day, right? St. Paul describes the children of the day as awake, clothed in faith and hope and love, and engaged in the precious work of encouraging one another. That title, Children of the Day, captivates me. It makes me think of those amazing people who remain hopeful in the face of all the things we've been living through this year, or those truly saintly people who are eagerly anticipating the coming day of the Lord and are fully prepared to welcome it, or those tireless people who keep working day in and day out for justice and for peace. If the day part of that title, Children of the Day, is the coming day of the Lord, the joyful reconciliation of all things, the end of sorrow and pain and suffering, the final turn in the arc of history that ends in justice and exclusion and racism and poverty. If that day is the day no child goes hungry, the day when sinners are redeemed and hate and greed are banished from memory, replaced with dignity and value and genuine interest in the other, if that's the day to which the children of the day belong, my goodness, do I want to live in that day. I want to be a child of that day. So when I hear the word of the Lord declare, you are children of the day, I'm filled with joy to imagine that I am counted among that number, and you are too. Glory, hallelujah. And then a moment later, I sink into deep remorse and shame when I recognize that the track record of my life does not line up very well with what I imagine the children of the day to be like. They shine with the brightness of holiness and justice and compassion and faith. I can't even keep up with my emails. They raise up their heads with hope in the day of trouble as citizens of a heavenly country do. I fuss and pout when my football team misses a field goal. The word of the Lord works this way in my life. It reveals that even my very best intentions and efforts to repair the world around me are not enough to end racism or hunger. The same glorious gospel vision of the day of the Lord and its children that thrills my heart also does this work of the law within me. It reveals how fully immersed I am in the systems of injustice and violence that cause people to suffer, systems that take away life rather than give it. And this honest assessment then drives me to Christ as my only hope and salvation. And there in Christ, I find a more blessed immersion and immersion in the waters of holy baptism, where I was joined to the death of Christ Jesus, just as you were, so that I may be raised with him, just as you will be. And because we are joined to Christ, we are joined to each other and numbered among the children of the day, not by virtue of our effort, but by the declaration of God's own purpose, who will have all things redeemed and whose word creates the thing it calls for. You are children of the day, the word of God declares to us, and it is so. This is our story. It's the story of the whole church. This story gives us hope in the mid most challenging times we face and encourage us then to give ourselves to others in the challenges they face because we believe that the day of the Lord that is coming will include them as fully as it includes us. We are children of the day because the word of God has declared us to be so. 
the day of the Lord will come because that is God's work. And it will come suddenly as a surprise to many, just as the scriptures say. But its coming is not a surprise to you. You can see that day coming already, even now, even in a time of national tumult, even during a pandemic. And you can live already in that coming day and rejoice in every moment in the life of the church and the world around us that moves toward the wider inclusion of all people, that moves toward justice, toward peace, toward life. As children of the day, this is your story. You know it. You trust it. You live it. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer response today is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human right abuses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are ill and in need of healing, especially Barb, Ray, Heidi, Laura, Bob, Jack, Karen, Tina, Dave, Mary Helen, Anusha, Susan, Chuck, Chris, Dorothy, Judy, Janet, Amy, Tom, Larry, Trudy, and those we name in our hearts. Assure them of your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>